how's it going guys? This week I did something very different. I made an impressionism style painting. I typically paint in a realism style, so this one uh, was not my usual uh, expertise, but I had a lot of fun making this one. I went to Joshua Tree National Park a couple weeks ago and I was inspired by the super bloom, all of the flowers uh, on the cacti and the brush and the small little plants right in the sand. They were, they were everywhere and they were full of color, so I was just so ready to get back in the studio and make something like this. For this one, I just wanted to really exaggerate all of the color from all of the flowers that I saw. So that's what I did here. I even chose uh, to paint like a sunset time of day so we have more color in the sky and those bold uh, contrasting shadows and highlights from the sun on the mountains. Uh, and then I even like went a little bit uh, more saturated with the colors of the sand and the colors of all these flowers here. So. Very, very colorful, very fun, expressive painting today. When I made this painting, I did a couple things differently from my usual painting style. I blended all of the colors for you ahead of time, so if you are new to oil painting, you can see all of the color mixtures and combinations that I created uh, coming out pretty soon. And once I blended all those colors, I put them onto this canvas here, so you'll see how I applied them on the canvas as well. Another thing that I did differently is I just plop that paint on there really thickly uh, on top of the old paint uh, while it was still wet. So a little bit of it blended towards the bottom, but for the most part, just plopping paint on top of paint. And usually what I'll do is I'll thin down my paint with my milk paint uh, citrus solvents, and that will help me to get really fine detailed lines and uh, lots of blending on the canvas, uh, but for this one, I didn't really do those fine detailed lines. Uh, these lines down here, I just used a palette knife and went shoop, shoop, and got those uh, little expressive lines down here. So this one, uh, like I said, different than what I normally make, but it was a lot of fun and follow along. We're gonna go through this, how I mix all the colors over here, and then how we put them on the canvas to make this painting. So thanks for watching and stay tuned, grab some popcorn because this one's going to be a detailed, extensive video. <laughs> As I am showing you the colors that I am adding to my palette, keep in mind that we're going to be mixing these colors soon and it's going to go pretty quickly so if you need to pause the video to write down what color blends make what mixture, you are welcome to do that. Uh, but to keep this video a little bit shorter, I sped up the next section so just get ready, here it comes. Okay guys, so first I started with mixing all of my purple shades. Uh, the purple is used throughout the painting in the sky, in the flowers, and in the sand. So I wanted to mix a good blend of some warm and cooler purples. So I started out with that alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. That gave me a warmer purple. Next I used my ultramarine blue with permanent rose. That gave me a cooler purple. And using various amounts of blue will warm or cool down your color. So the more blue you add, the more towards the blue spectrum you're gonna go. So keep that in mind. Uh, maybe start with just a little bit of uh, your addition color first and keep adding more and more. Don't just add equal amounts of both colors and expect to get the color you want. So I'm continuing to make my purples here using different reds and blues together. Now I'm starting to mix some of my green hues. So I started out with cadmium yellow light and sap green. I use that color a lot. Uh, it's a nice spring green color. Next I grabbed some of that, moved it over, and I added some of my cadmium yellow medium hue. So that gave it that gave it a little more of a yellow orangish hue. Next I just was playing around with some of my green shades that I don't typically create, but I wanted to see what would happen if I blended those colors. So I mixed some yellow ochre with my blues, then I tried adding some viridian and thalo green. I was pretty happy with these blends of colors, they're pretty nice. Now I made like a 
yellow mixed with raw umber, just a very neutral shadow yellow color. And we're using some permanent green light, Prussian blue, and cadmium red. So you'd be surprised, but mixing red into your greens is a really good way to turn your green into more of a brownish green. And I like to do that a lot with my golf course landscapes because if you paint everything just yellow and green or blue and green, the trees are all going to blend together. So you're going to add some reds and some purples into your green as well to get different shades. Next I started blending some blues. These are the blues we're going to have in the sky. Some of these blues are going to be in the shadows on the sand. And some of these blues are also going to be in the grass and in the flowers. So the blues are pretty much throughout the painting as well. The blues are also in the mountains, so yes, they are everywhere throughout the painting. All right, now I'm mixing some warm pastel-y colors, mixing my yellow with white, adding a little bit of cadmium red just to get a very soft orange, making it even brighter. That's gonna be the highlight in the sky on the clouds. Now I'm making a little bit of a shadowy color that's gonna be in the sand and in the clouds, just by mixing some colors that I previously blended together to get a more neutral tone there. This next color combination is one that we already mixed, but this time I'm using a lot more ultramarine blue, so it's much more cooler than the other color. Now I'm using some phthalo, raw umber, and white just to get a shadowy blue color. This one is warming up the blue a little bit with that light red that I added. Gives us more of a neutral brown. And next we're using burnt sienna and white. I love this color. For some reason, it's just, I'm very drawn to that color. Next I'm adding a little bit of cadmium yellow medium, just to bring it a little more towards the orange. Ultramarine blue, purple, and some white. Mixing another purple, nice cool purple. If you're a new oil painter and you have the funds to buy all of these oil paints, uh, these all cost somewhere between $5 and $15 for a tube of paint. <laughs> if you're able to get all of those and you're eager to learn, then I recommend just mixing all these colors or just you know making your own color combinations on a big palette like this. I'm just using a piece of plexiglass as my palette, so just go ahead and have fun with it, mix a bunch of colors, and then create an abstract piece or an impressionism piece that doesn't require the specific knowledge of perspective, uh, where to put your shadows, color value, brush stroke techniques. There's a lot you can learn, but I think blending colors and just having fun and finding out what you like to do first is a good way to get started. And you guys might be catching on by now, but again, if you're new to this, adding white will brighten up your color. It will make your color a little bit less saturated though. Uh, and then adding darker colors it is going to make it more neutral. Uh, you'll notice I didn't put any black on here because I'm doing an impressionism piece. I didn't want to have any black. I wanted to have uh, vibrant colors. I didn't want to have any muted colors, even though some of them are a little bit more neutral, earthy shades. They're uh, still pretty saturated. And you'll also notice that we have warm shades and we have cool shades. So our reds and our oranges are warm and our greens and our blues are mostly cool. Our purples can be cool or warm depending on what colors you add to them. Just trying to wrap up here with a few more color shades fitting onto the palette. Once I finish blending all these colors, we're going to get started with putting these colors onto the canvas.